When I was a kid growing up in San Diego, I was terrified of roller coasters. There was an old wooden one near my house, so unfortunately going on it was a rite of passage I simply couldn't avoid. I'll never forget that click, click, click as that cart headed up to the top. Watching our next film brought back a lot of old feelings, mostly in my stomach. In the shadow of Utah's Wasatch Mountains, a strange new shape rises from the mud. It's a radical new creation called the Pipeline. Built of fiberglass and steel, it's a multi-million dollar thrill machine. For three years, designer Ron Toomer and his staff have been dreaming and planning. Now, they're just days away from finding out. Will it work? Will it be the latest in a long line of contraptions that have been shaking up Americans for years? Folks come from all over to experience coasters like the Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. Man, thumbs up. Awesome. I love it. That was great. You're in the front. You just kind of, there's a couple of just small ones. You just go up, almost up, off the track. And then, and then you just land down and you keep going. <laughs> I ain't doing this walking around just eating. <laughs> I think there's a basic part of our personality that loves excitement, that loves to be scared, all the way from when we were infants and our parents would uh, toss us up a little bit and catch us and we would uh, scream with joy. Randy Geisler is the former president of the American Coaster Enthusiasts. I think there's part of our psyche that seeks adventure, that wants to push it a little bit to the edge. And roller coasters offer that kind of excitement in a very safe, controlled environment. Very few of us will get the opportunity to go skydiving or race car driving or bobsledding. But a good roller coaster combines all of those kind of elements in a two-minute adventure that's in a magnificent structure, that's an architectural masterpiece, an engineering marvel. To me, what's not to love about roller coasters? Roller coasters actually go back to the 15th century. The Russians built these magnificent winter slides, toboggan attractions that featured steep drops and hills. They loved these so much that they said, why don't we build these in the summertime as well? And instead of making them out of snow and ice, they built them out of wood. And that's kind of where the concept for a roller coaster came from. The first roller coaster here in America opened in 1884 at Coney Island in New York, and it was a huge success. Roller coasters just took off from then. Well, there were 
actually some technological advances that were necessary before roller coasters could really hit their heyday. The biggest one was the idea of putting wheels underneath the track, which didn't occur until 1912, and that allowed cars to stay on the track. With that kind of technological advance, coasters did take off to the golden age, where by 1930 we had over 1,500 roller coasters in the United States. They were fantastically popular. hooked up it looks like marrying an old tradition with new technology yeah, pipeline okay. inventor ron toomer is creating the next generation of roller coasters a former aerospace engineer he is among the pioneers of the new steel mega coasters in the past three decades toomer and his company arrow dynamics have built over 80 roller coasters from jakarta to sandusky ohio I think there's nothing more satisfying to me, and I would assume anyone else, an engineer, whatever you are, that does something, and then you get to go out and watch all these hundreds of thousands of people riding this thing, and coming back, they're cheering and yelling and screaming all over the place how great it is, and uh, it means quite a bit. Tumor's coasters have taken their place among the world's most frightening rides. Over the years, Toomer and his company have designed all sorts of pretzels and corkscrews and loops. But the pipeline is a fiendishly new concept with a whole new level of design challenges. Twisting and turning and snaking through space, the pipeline coaster will ride neither on top of nor below the tracks, but between them. And the cars will not just loop, but roll like stunt planes coaster that can uh, go down the track and rotate about this axis at the same time that it's it's doing all the other things so so maybe you can go into a loop instead of going up over the top you get on top and you just turn over and end up right side up all of a sudden and then some other uh, wild uh, gyration more like airplane acrobatics after years of design work from sketches on paper to computer graphics, to scale models, and now to reality, it all comes down to this, the day of the first test. For Ron Toomer and engineering director Dal Freeman, three years' work are at stake. No one knows if the coaster will work, and it's much too chancy to put passengers aboard for the first run. Initial tests will measure speed, acceleration, and G-forces in an empty train. 
If the pipeline actually works, Toomer hopes it will be the prime attraction in amusement parks for the next decade. In the U.S. alone, these parks count 250 million visitors every year. With speeds over 70 miles an hour and 20-story drops, today's coaster is the prime draw. A draw with sadistic names like Ninja, Vortex, Shockwave, and Montezuma's Revenge. There are nearly 200 of these coasters across the country. And nobody's too young to get started. Six Flags Magic Mountain, along with... Across America, folks are willing to line up for three hours just for a three-minute ride. And then there are the real fans. Coaster enthusiasts will orient their vacation times around roller coasters. Instead of going to see the Swallows in Capistrano, we'll go see the Colossus at Magic Mountain or the Vortex at Kings Island or wherever it is that we might care to go. We've uh, formed a club called the American Coaster Enthusiasts, which is actually a misnomer. We're proud to say that we have members in 15 countries throughout the world, and we have more than 3,000 members, and it's an organization formed to increase the appreciation, the enjoyment, and the preservation of the roller coaster, something that we think makes our life on Earth just a little more enjoyable. It's just fun. It's just going fast. Get married on a roller coaster, have my birthday on a roller coaster, do business on a roller coaster. I am fascinated by anything on rails. Uh, you can have a lot of fun in a small amount of time, and you can do the same thing over and over again. Some people pump iron when they're mad. Some people just walk along the beach. I go to the park. I think it's a lot better than ripping and running the streets and just getting in your car wasting gas. Like going uh, down a fast elevator or um, purposing in an airplane, or riding a motorcycle on a windy road, just right on the edge, almost out of control. You know, you have that feel of freedom, you know? where you're just on something and you're just alone and you're just riding and you really don't care what else is going on. Psychologists have actually speculated that there are little T and big T types of personalities. Little T people are those who the chemicals in your brain or the neuroses or whatever, <laughs> the psychoses that we all have, that there are people who don't require quite as much stimulation to get excited, to get motivated through life. And then there are big T types of personalities, those who require a lot of stimulation, a lot of adrenaline rush to get, to get excited. And those are the kind of people who might might seek roller coasters and amusement parks and skydiving and mountain climbing or whatever. Everybody has to have a hobby. You got to go from state to state, from ear to ear, and from park in to park in. You can't just stop in one ride. You got to give it all. It's, it's obsessive, but who cares? I can do this every day for the rest of my life. Right, seat belt's on. Handles gripped. Hat is on. Hey, lean left, okay? <laughs> and uh, have yourself a good ride. Uh -oh. Watch that first drop, it's a big one. Yeah, it's a good one. Kim Peterson took his obsession with roller coasters right into his own backyard. Okay, Mike. This is the second coaster he's built. Oh, the worst part, the anticipation, the thrill. Now watch the pros. Watch the pros and take a look at pictures that I've taken on trips and uh, try and figure it out, draw sketches and build a little here, build a little there, and next thing you know, I've got a coaster. Woo! I thought it was a big joke, but kept talking about it, and you kind of realize, hey, he's uh, serious. And I figured, well, it's better than him working on motorcycles in the living room or something, and kept him out of trouble, so 
I thought it was all right. It's one of the few places where an adult can scream out loud and it's okay. Oh, oh yeah! And it's going. In Clearfield, Utah, they are now minutes away from the big test, the first run of the pipeline. Because this is a test track, there is no chain lift to tow the train to the top, just a crane. For Randy Giesler, Testing a new coaster concept is an event not to be missed. They don't expect human beings to ride this, do they? <laughs> That's about the most mutated piece of roller coaster trackage I've ever seen. I think Ron Toomer has finally gone over the edge. Oh, man. Watch out. For Toomer and Freeman, the key question oh. is, will the coaster coast? Will it get all the way around on its own momentum? Take off the vehicle. Take this one out. Put this one back in. Okay. Count to five and go ahead. Three, 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 <laughs> Good work, old chap. <laughs> that's planned. Hey, that's beautiful. Isn't that great? Yep. Woo! Stay up there till morning, you guys. <laughs> Having passed all its engineering tests, now it's time for the real experience. A run with passengers. Oh, less than what you let it down before. Randy Giesler is invited on board. Pipeline's first passengers pronounce it a success. But for Ron Toomer, there's still a lot of work ahead. It'll be another two years before the pipeline makes it into the amusement parks. For coaster enthusiasts, there's reason to wait. Another wonderful, queasy thrill is just around the bend. The next generation of the roller coaster. It seems to me that we weren't put on this earth to uh, sit on sofas and uh, watch the days go by. We were meant to go out and do things, to have the wind rush through our hair and to grab for all of the excitement that life can offer. A roller coaster to me gives you that kind of adventure, that exhilaration that I think uh, can motivate us all to go through the rest of our day-to-day -day lives.